We gaan weer beginnen. Welkom uh, bij dag 2 van Hacker Hotel. We beginnen met de eerste talk. De eerste talk is van, uh, van Roy. Hij gaat jullie wat interessants vertellen. En uh, ja, ik denk dat het gewoon leuk is. Dames en heren, Roy van Dongen. Uh, so I'm uh, Roy van Dongen. Uh, I do some security research. I work in security uh, for some time, and I, exp I have experience with a lot of stuff that concerns decryption, SSL, uh, web, anything you can think of. And recently, I was browsing the internet and I found this number. Has anyone looked up this number on the internet, by any chance? Okay, we'll get to that. No problem. Um, these days, there is something going on about decryption. Because decryption is around since some time, and I will show you since when. Um, and people are starting to do strange stuff with it. And that's what this talk is about. What are the dangers of decryption? So this talk, we're going to look at decryption. How does it work? How does normal web traffic work? And what can go wrong? And how does it look when stuff goes wrong? And who can abuse this? So I don't have a lot of slides. I believe I have 19 slides or something like that. So I hope my talk will make up for that. And then otherwise, just ask me a lot of questions. Then it at least feels like a long talk. We're going to do some introduction. Well, the introduction is really simple. Uh, after that, we're going to look at how does www work. So I'm going to open up a web page and then what happens. And then we're going to do stuff with SSL. We're going to en enable encryption. And then we're going to compare how encryption works in instead of using plain text HTTP. Um, after that, we're going to look at decryption. So we already got an SSL connection, and then we're going to break it open and see what's inside. Um, and after that, we are going to tell you why it's actually quite bad to do decryption. Because I don't like it. And uh, I have worked for an employer who actually sells devices who are capable of doing decryption. And I always refuse to build it because I really hate it. So if you want to know anything about decryption, you can always poke me afterwards. I will be there until Sunday evening around that. And then just ask me questions about it. Maybe I can answer them. And otherwise, there are probably enough people in the room who also know some stuff about decryption. I'm going to tell you a bit about the bug ID. And then, well, it might be a little bit strange to talk about this because I always had this talk in the opposite way how to enable decryption, but I really hated it. So now finally, I can tell people what's the danger of it and how can someone abuse it? And what can you do against decryption? So first of all, a normal HTTP request. And I tried to do this n really non-technical, so there's uh, just some lines involved. But again, I can show you uh, with uh, Wireshark and everything if you really want it. But because of the, uh, the small, um, uh, political references I have, I want to keep this as uh, simple as possible for everyone to understand. So I have a client and I have a server on the internet. And if we're going to look at how does a website actually show its content to me, then first of all, I type in, in this case, reddit.com, and I want to see cat loaf pictures, of course, because we all want to see cat pictures. And then the server, he will get my request and he will send me back cat pictures, at least I hope so. And if I'm really lucky, then on my screen, there's a cat. So this is really simple because I have a request and the only thing the server does is send back data. But the dangerous thing about this is this data is unencrypted. So at this moment, it's just cat pictures. But what if this was bank credentials or email credentials or anything? They will also be sent plain text. So that's dangerous. Well, if we look a bit at the, well, there's the URL, nothing strange going on there. If we look a bit at the history, about the history of www, then we see that in the beginning, some smart guys at DARPA and other institutes created the internet. They enhanced it in every way possible. Uh, and then in 1989, the World Wide Web was born and we started using HTTP semicolon slash slash and a name. And then something strange happened because people found out that stuff was going over the line in plain text. We could actually listen in on people typing in their credentials. And in 1995, the first government authorized network tap was placed. And this is where it gets a bit funky because now the government can automatically listen in on everything you do on the internet. And that sucks. And of course, not only the government does this, but also criminals, 
but I don't know of who you should be more afraid. So then in 2000, actually some smart guys thought, well, this sucks. We have to do something. We have to make the, the WWW more secure. And then they decided to create the HTTPS RFC. And in the HTTPS RFC, they actually make some decisions. They uh, found out how to encrypt all the traffic from your client to the server. And in a way that you possibly were not able to listen in. Or at least until 2006. Because in 2006, the NSA actually found out a program. It's called Bull Run. It's, uh, I believe it's already out in the open right now. And they started decrypting SSL traffic. And that's where it gets dangerous, because until present day, there have been <coughs> not really new techniques to uh, furthermore secure your traffic. There are some things we can do in enhancement to the, the default RFC, but yeah, there's still an open end on the right side. And of course, that's dangerous. So that's what, what, uh, what leads up to the decryption part. And if we're then going to look at, and I said again, I tried to make this as simple as possible. So if we're going to look at the same picture, uh, I've got nothing to hide. Or do I? This is our traffic now. So we started using SSL because we thought, well, my cat picture should be really secure. And of course, uh, you can replace cat pictures with banking credentials, email credentials, you name it. So I am going to send my request to the server and then the server will give me its certificate back. Well, that's new. And with the certificate, I can do something funny because now I can validate the certificate locally. And now I know, well, reddit.com, it's a valid website because I can verify the certificate. So what happens next? I'm going to create a session key. <coughs> and this is a part where it goes about encryption. This is a, a session key I'm generating on my client. I will send it to the server. And from now on, the server will send all its precious data via a secured connection. And again, you can replace cat pictures with credentials, you name it. And if I'm lucky again, the cat will appear. So this is cool. And I already notice I'm going through the slides way too fast. But if you have questions. OK, <coughs> so this is how stuff should go. <coughs> but I don't know if anyone noticed something which we might can abuse over here or other people can abuse, because it looks good. People thought about this, and it looks secure. But what's going on there? Step three. The client is now validating the certificate locally. How does that work? Well, there's the, the funky part. <coughs> We're going to look now at uh, the technique of decryption. And if we look at what is decryption, then there's a small sentence. And I had the, uh, the definition from the Techopedia website. And decryption is the process of transforming data that has been rendered unreadable through encryption back to its unencrypted form. So I have my cat pictures, my bank credentials, you name it. And someone has now got the capability to make them plain text again, so they can read it. Well, that sucks. That's not how this is supposed to happen. So this is decryption. And decryption is now a topic that's a bit more uh, in the news lately. It has something to do with certain uh, laws that are proposed and might happen in the near future. So therefore, I thought it was a good idea to show you what decryption does and what the dangers are of decryption. So again, we have client-server. And I like simple pictures, therefore, just this. And now something strange is happening because, and for a demo, it's always good to abuse the NSA. So I'm going to send my connection to the internet. And now apparently, the American government is listening in. So OK, I'm sending my request. I want to see more cat pictures because I got an unfulfilled need for cat pictures all day. And the, the thing in the middle, and this is what we call the man in the middle. In this case, it's the NSA, maybe. It just sends out my request. So I'm typing in reddit.com slash I said catloaf. It's uh, something I do on a daily basis. And then something in between will just forward my traffic. Nothing strange going on there. But then the server will just send a certificate back <coughs> as I'm used to. OK, sure, because I want to validate the server. That's what SSL is all about. 
But then something strange happened in the next step. Because now the third party device, the thing in the middle, it's replacing the certificate. And this is the part where the decryption is made possible. Because now I receive a certificate on my client, which of course I'm going to validate. And the certificate isn't from the server, but it's from the third party. And now magic happens. <coughs> because for the sake of this talk, we're going to assume that everything works out just fine. And they shouldn't just work out fine, if you're a bit familiar with decryption. But we'll get to that. So I'm sending my generated session key to a third party. And what they do, they change the session key. They generate their own session key. And what's actually happening at this exact moment? We have one session between me, the unsuspected client, and this third party device. And that's an encrypted session, woohoo. It's really safe to send out all my dangerous and secret stuff. And then the third party device has a new session towards the server on the internet. But what happens in between? Well, in between, the data is plain text. And that's exactly what decryption is. Because from now on, everything I send to the server, and the server is sending back, is going via a third party. And if someone did this hack the right way, we might even end up with the green lock. And, uh, what? Why a green lock? Because the green lock was invented to verify this server, not something in between. Well, this is exactly what's the issue with decryption these days. And this is one of the things, the decryption technique is being used in companies all over the Netherlands and Europe. All the banks in the Netherlands actually use it in their internal offices. And why do they use it? Because they want to prevent their internal users from sending passwords to Office, Dropbox, you name it. They don't want people's social security numbers to be transferred towards the internet. So internally in a company, they decided let's do decryption. So at least in the middle, on the right edge of our network, we can do inspection of our company traffic. And that's secure. Is it? There, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with this. Um, unfortunately, if you do this in a company, it's quite easy to do this, because if you have an Active Directory, yeah, you, can import the you automatically import the company root certificate. And then as long as you say, well, everything we do, we do from the company root certificate, you will get a green lock. Well, you have the CAA records of DNS now. I'll get to that. Okay. I'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> so there were some things from the audience about CAA records. We'll get to that. That's no problem at all. OK. But for now, let's just look at this, because something strange is going on. There's a third party involved, and I don't really like the NSA. Nobody likes the NSA. We saw that last week in the news. Might be too soon to talk about this, but yeah. So something strange is going on, because someone just assumed my trust. We're going to verify the certificate, and everything turns out just fine. That's not cool. That's not cool at all, because if we talk about certificates, there's a really nice system behind it. Because we got, in this case, reddit.com as an example, and they have a lot of money. So they go to a company that actually grants them a certificate. And as long as I trust that company, there's some security involved. So there's reddit.com, and they actually talk to, it's somewhere on the next slide, but I accidentally forgot it. They talk to a third party. And they will ask them, well, can you give me a valid reference? Because I want to be um, secured and I want people to trust me. And the company in the middle, the intermediate company, those aren't the ones that are trusted. No, they also have a reference with a so-called root certificate authority. And those are the guys we trust. Or should we? Well, the root certificate authority, they actually sign a certificate for the intermediate party and the intermediate party has the option to sign the certificate for reddit.com. So from now on, as long as I trust the root certificate authority, we have a chain of trust. I can verify reddit.com ver via the intermediate, via the root CA, and then I will get a green lock. This is a cool system. Someone thought about this and it's quite nice. There's a lot of information about the chain of trust and how stuff works and you can do really crazy stuff with this. 
but this is how it works nowadays. We got uh, Let's Encrypt. Everyone knows Let's Encrypt. They do the exact same thing. Let's Encrypt in this case will be the intermediate party which we can request a certificate for one of the websites I use for this presentation. <coughs> and then they have uh, a partnership with a root certificate authority which grants them the right to have a green lock if I go to a website secured by Let's Encrypt. Super. In this case, if we look at Reddit, and it was Digicert, if you look at a certificate, and you can do this on all browsers these days, there's always a security tab, or you can always click on the lock, and then you see some information about certificate. And this will tell you exactly how we trust Reddit. Because in this case, the first thing I'm going to look at is, well, the certificate is valid. Because what happened? Well, the time range isn't yet expired. So that's good, because they paid for the certificate. And then it's still valid until the 21st of August. Well, that's one check we're going to do. We're going to do some other checks. But again, we look at the, the chain. And in this case, reddit.com is verified by an intermediate called the Digicert SHA-2 Secure CA. And they on themselves also happen to have a root CA. And they verified themselves versus the Digicert global root CA. And apparently, we trust Digicert, so therefore, we also trust reddit.com. This is SSL in, I think, under five minutes, the last couple of slides. <coughs> this is really simplified. You can get in, in the techniques and everything, and there are some people from Pixabar who actually know quite a bit about encryption techniques these days, so you might ask them, or me, doesn't matter. We're going to look uh, now at our environment, or uh, in this case, OSX keychain, Linux, and then we see if we open up our root cataloger, we see the Digicert global root CA, it's also installed here. And if we look at the next slide, well that's where it all happens. Someone actually predefined a list of root certificates. And I'm not that someone. So apparently someone else defined that some certificates should be in this list. And it's quite small. But I'll uh, give the presentation uh, after the um, I give the PowerPoint after the presentation to Dimitri, and I think he will distribute it any further. You can also use this presentation, and if you look at it, you might see something nice going on in the snapshots I took, because there's one CA jumping out over here, and that's exactly what I what I'm talking about. Uh, but for now, we'll get to that. So the predefined system routes they are defined by, or well in this case, Microsoft. Microsoft has made a list over here for root CAs we should trust. And how does this happen? Well, of course, there's, there's standardization, there are audits for each and every root CA worldwide. And as long as you comply to the audits and every security check that's involved, you're allowed to be on this list. That can go wrong. If you look at the DigiNotar in the past, start SSL, <laughs> stuff like that. They actually didn't comply to the rules anymore because information leaked out or there was abuse of the CA. And then the certificate was pulled from the predefined root list. So if you look at your Windows environment these days, you might still find the DigiNota cert somewhere in the untrusted folder, stuck far away. Uh, but it's still, it's still there, but someone actually said, well, you don't comply anymore. Go away. Well, of course, on Mac OS and on Linux, we have the exact same stuff going on. So for Linux, there's a package manager and blah. I think people over here know a lot more about Linux than I do. But someone decides that a CA certificates package can be upgraded. And then you have your certificate authority uh, validation complete. And on OS X, of course, I it's the same. That might be, that might be, <laughs> and that would be very interesting because that's what this talk is about, about the Mozilla list, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <I'm not coughs> say no, 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 it doesn't matter. If you have questions, want to say anything, just throw it at me. Not the blue thing, because that hurts, I <laughs> had been told. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we get to the bug ID, and this is actually where the Mozilla lists kick in. Because bug ID, 
8647 was launched four months ago by this guy, Chris van Pelt. And I actually tried to reach him to tell him that I was going to do this talk. And he actually responded. And it was a really short conversation and I told him, I'm going to tell a bit about decryption and I want to refer to your bug ID. Because this was an interesting bug ID. Normally I'm not triggered that much by bug IDs, but this was an interesting one. Because what happened here? Some government, not really far away from where we live, decided they were going to propose an upgrade to the law where they might be able to listen in on your traffic. And then this guy said, well, that's not cool. So I'm now proposing you guys via bug ID to distrust this government. Because we don't like this. <coughs> if I'm go going to reddit.com and I want to see cat pictures, the government shouldn't be able to listen in. So this text is out in the open. I also added some sources. There's I interesting information right there. But what he said was we should distrust this government. Because somewhere in the past, this government actually created uh, a root certificate. And they managed to get it installed in Microsoft, Linux, OS X, all the other systems in the world. And then we're going to start about what can go wrong here. And that's interesting. Because in the proposal for this law, there was already a part about people should always comply to give out their credentials to unlock everything and we should always be able to listen in if someone agrees to that. And that was already there. And then this happened. And this was interesting. There was a new paragraph and I'll <coughs> try to translate it a bit for the non-native Dutch people. But what is stated here, the government should also be allowed to use false signals yeah, I don't know what that means, but sure. <laughs> They're allowed to use false keys. And false keys, that's the interesting part. Because we just talked about certificates. And certificates and keys are the exact same thing. So the government is now, maybe in the near future, is allowed to use false keys to listen in on our traffic. Automatically. So there's no hands-on needed anymore. That's strange. This isn't right. At least not if you're not in America. Because apparently there everyone just thinks it's okay. Yeah. <coughs> so at this moment, if a certain government, <laughs> and you might already see what I did there. <laughs> I used the CA, Stasi der Nederlanden root CA looks like the original but Stasi felt more the right thing when will my certificate warning become just a valid certificate and that's exactly what my point is in this presentation within a couple of weeks there's a, a referendum I don't know if that translates correctly to the English language but we get to vote if this is a good idea or not. And I think we should use the vote. But I'm not the one who should tell you what to do, but I will give you some information about what's actually possible if we start using this in the wrong way. So for now, we're still safe-ish because the government isn't allowed to do this. So of course they won't do this because we trust our government. There's a question from the back of the room. Throw it really hard at him, he's okay with that. <laughs> talk, talk in the microphone, please. Oh, at the oh one moment. Uh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the government isn't legally, um, uh, well, doesn't have the legally possibility to do it, but unlegally, I'm not so sure. I'm not the one who has to make or ha uh, want to make speculations here, <laughs> but I think if the offense is bad enough, they actually might already have something in place that they could do this, and otherwise they could always call it a test bed for well, testing. I think the, the so-called IVD and MVD has has a capability or to do this 
illegally or so legally if it's been uh, run by the local uh, local law but this this is for the bune so to say this is yeah. for for making it legal all the way but fortunately i didn't look into that because then i would get more paranoid and you would get more paranoid we'll start getting paranoid <laughs> <laughs> but of course the, the technique is already there and there are some governments who are known to use this technique so it could be that this is happening in the netherlands however we're all really good civilians and the first thing we do if we browse a website is we're going to open up the certificate and we're going to see what's in there and then we see what this isn't the cert. that's what we're going to do of course you and if it isn't the dutch government there's also the turkish korean chinese russian and all the other governments in the world that have root CAs. Yeah. yeah. And it are actually not all the companies in the world who have their own root CAs, but the Netherlands was one of the first who had their own root CA installed worldwide on every computer automatically. And they ha now have the capability to start abusing it. So, what can you do? Because now I already made you paranoid and then, well, now we all have to start crying well, there are some things we can do. It involves not only ourselves, but also the server administrators to use this in the right way. But there are some techniques. And if they're used quite right, then this will never happen. But we could think about stuff like this. We could, and this is just a demo, I don't say you have to do this. We could put the government certificate in our untrusted certificate list. That's something we can do. And from now on, every time I go to the belastingdienst.nl, the Dutch tax office website, I'm not able to connect anymore. That's maybe the downside, or it might also be a good thing. But then, if something nasty happens with this certificate, it will get blocked. And there's a question from the back of the room. <laughs> you have way too much fun uh, throwing the mic. <laughs> But if you cannot trust your government, and you cannot trust any government, yep. and you cannot trust any company that's based in a country which is run by a government, you have to delist everyone. And you Correct. cannot trust anyone, so the entire system becomes broken. Correct. Is, is there a solution for this? Yeah, sure. And, and don't say web of trust, please. No, 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 no. <laughs> but there's a solution. And it isn't a smart blockchain, but we can definitely... Really disappointing. <laughs> we, we can definitely get up to... 79% cybersecurity. If you just visit my desk, then I will give you my certificate from my website, and you can import them in your certificate store, and from now on you can securely connect to my server. Now, now, now I have 10 people. We, we all go to your desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, now yeah. I'm one of the people that has to work with the tax, o tax office. Yeah. That's what, four million people in the yeah. Netherlands alone? Yeah. It's, it's going to be a busy year for you. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but that's, no, that's, no. that's basically Web of Trust, what you're describing. Yeah. But yeah and that's no one of the bad right? things. And um, what we can do, however, we can choose to distrust our entire government or a entire government. But we can also ask the server operators to use public key pinning. And with the technique of public key pinning, the server administrator actually uh, copies copies uh, the, the, um, the fingerprint of their public key in an HTTPS header that will be sent to the client and then we can do a matching is this header the exact same as the header of the certificate we're receiving at this moment so if there's someone in between then this check will fail and we're safe again well I actually wanted to try it but I haven't tried I think you can also spoof this header so that might be a thing, and there's a question right from the front. <coughs> oh. the, hello, hello. Yeah. the public key pinning is already sort of outdated. Google yeah. has the expect CT, and it's uh, less uh, problematic as the public key pinning. Is it? Yeah. You trust Google with everything? <laughs> no, <n> but <laughs> this is a drama when it goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, your browser will block. Uh, it yeah, it's for a one of, of the time. things we could do. Yeah. And of course, you should stack up everything. And we can also use this, and this is actually quite nice. Yeah. DNS CAA records, but they can also be abused because with a DNS CAA record, you will tell in your 
public DNS um, directory that if someone wants to request for this website, stasidenederlanden.org, then it's only allowed if they do it via Let's Encrypt. And I already requested those certificates. So uh, in this case, uh, if they try to do so, and I actually say I also have my own CA over here, so I can also sign certificates. If Let's Encrypt now receives a request for stasidenederlanden.org, they will decline it because I'm the rightful owner, or at least I hope I am. Um, and I actually might even get an email <coughs> for the abuse at my email address. But again, this is a standard and it's official now and people should use it, but it doesn't necessarily mean they are going to use it. <coughs> and that was what this talk was about. So it wasn't a really long talk, but I, I hope I gave you a really small insight about what are the dangers of government-wide decryption. And some people in this room actually use this technique for good because you can do virus scanning if you do decryption in your company, sure. But you can also use it for bad. And that's one of the things you might want to be warned about. And that was the talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.